How's it going, wrestling fans? Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wrestle Report, episode 35 with Phil and Don. I am Phil. And I'm Don. Lots of things to talk about, some good things like AEW full gear on Saturday, some, you know, not very, not sure what to make of it, things like what's going on with Ring of Honor, and some straight up sad things like another round of cuts from WWE. And I think we should start there and that we can gradually get to the happier stuff by the end of this show. Uh, it's getting old. I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start it off just like that. It's getting old. That and we're at the point now where I'm calling them cuts. I'm not calling them releases. This feels like when we're watching preseason football and you get that report every couple, you know, every other week about who's no longer on your team. Like, hey, coach wants to see you bring your playbook. Like, it's starting to feel like that. And what makes this whole thing worse is WWE is calling this budget cuts. This is the reason for this. A company that made 225 million dollars this year. This year is citing budget cuts for the release of you've got to be damn near 50 wrestlers since the pandemic started. Oh yeah, man. Um, I, I, I made a joke that this, that you can make last year's cuts and this year's cuts and put them all together and you have your own promotion. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's, that's, that's definitely sad um, yeah. that that's happening, that this is happening nowadays. And, and when you see these cuts, you're like, damn, man, hopefully it's not the people that you actually like. Um, this one, I think this one surprised a lot more people than than the last than the last uh, set of cuts. I mean, the last set had guys like Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman in it, guys that we assumed would be like WWE lifers, you know. And we had a few of those, like Karrion Cross. I think, was the big name for a lot of people because, like, they've put all this work into him. Not good work, but work at least. And, you know, NXT champion, he dominated there, and they haven't quite figured out what to do with him here. They gave him the Mad Max-type gimmick on Raw, didn't know what to do with it, didn't have Scarlett come up with him. And then probably the only bigger name and the equally surprising name, it's surprising in a way, but also the way his career has been going, Keith Lee, you know, yeah. doesn't have to be called Bearcat anymore uh, because he is also released. And those are easily the top two. What surprised you more, Karrion Cross or Keith Lee? Uh carrying in probably just because like they like you said they put all this work into him mm. um, with the vignettes and all that stuff but i, I definitely saw it happen i saw it coming just because um i haven't seen him on tv for a while yeah um and what keith lee is like dang bro you just repackaged him yeah. he was just became, he just became a heel and the latin what's crazy is when i went to the, the when it was in jacksonville mm-hmm um keith lee was actually in a dark in the dark match hmm. so like he was he was bringing out that he was testing out that gimmick the the uh he was actually heel he was working heel that 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 man um during that match huh. i don't think we ever got to i think we like took a break or a gap of time before we did an episode but we didn't get to talk about you going to smackdown a couple months ago i don't think we even brought that up at any point oh, yeah 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 but I mean, it, good, good, it was, good it was nothing. It was nothing. I was just on TV. Just, just yeah, saying. he was. He was on TV. <laughs> I think it's still on his Twitter. He's got to scroll. You'll have to scroll back a little bit now to find it. But like <laughs> the show, I haven't been to a WWE show in a while, and I guess we're kind of going out of order here. But we probably should have talked about that at some point. I'm sure being there though was still a good time, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so and it's you know the the attendance is down, and I don't want to make everything AEW versus WWE, and the ratings are one thing. Uh, and we've talked about how the ratings aren't really accurately depicted these days because, you know, I watch it every week and my ratings not counted. I don't know if Don's is if he's watching on regular cable. But one thing that you can look at is like attendance and WWE is getting, you know, their lunch handed to them by AEW when they run similar events in similar towns as far as attendance goes. And, you know, it's stuff like this that when you go to AEW, you know who you're going to see. If I buy a ticket for SmackDown, SmackDown tends to come to Orlando in like February time, almost every year. It's like clockwork. If I buy that ticket now, I don't know who I'm going to see in February at the rate they're going. And that would, has, you know, because, you know, as much as we talk about it, I'd still go to a SmackDown and have a good time, just like Don and Billy did a couple months ago. But at this rate, I don't know what to, I won't be excited for anything. I don't know, you know, there's not a single guy I see on TV now that I'm convinced other than maybe like Randy Orton that'll for sure be there in two months. And that's the biggest problem with this. Yeah, I'll, I'll also throw one more name in there, Roman Reigns. I think Roman Reigns is, is not going anywhere. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the WWE will be stupid if they was to get rid of Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns will definitely make that jump to AEW really quick. <laughs> Another one I was kind of surprised about just because I thought she was a little untouchable and because she's made mistakes before that didn't seem to really affect her. 
I was really shocked to see Nia Jax in this match. Yes, I was too, especially since, you know, she's The Rock's cousin. Yeah. So I, didn't, I, I didn't think that she was actually going to get cut either. Uh, that was that was my one of my uh, top five su- surprises as well. Um, did you see what she posted after? That it, it she heavily implied she didn't come out and say, but she heavily implied that it had to do with her vaccination status. Yeah, and uh, I also I also heard that she 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 was taking a break because like, the last thing we saw of her was with her and Shayna. Um, mm-hmm. Shayna supposedly broke her arm, uh, mm-hmm. um, and. and and um, Nia Jax wanted to take like a mental a mental health um, break. Yeah, and reports have it that she actually um, was supposed to be set to come back on the fifteenth or this, uh, next week actually. Mm. Um, but she didn't want to come back yet because she was she still wanted some extra time for the to recover and stuff. Right, and. Um, and WWE didn't want her. Uh, WWE wanted her to uh, to come back right away, and she, she and they just fought. She fought back at them. Basically. Yeah, if you if you want to get released, just ask for time off. They always they hate that. They've always hated that. I think you see yeah. Punk made a joke about that recently. I forget someone else had a similar story. Uh, so that does not bode well. It's not a good look for WWE, especially like with the situation with John Moxley right now that he's gone into. I don't want to call it rehab. I think that's a that's a bit an exaggeration, but an alcohol treatment center I think is a better mm-hmm. way to get. I don't know that it's straight rehab necessarily. I think it's a pretty extreme to call it that. But the fact that he's basically taking time to himself to to battle whatever demons he has, and the way AEW was like championed him uh, for doing it, and you know recommending mm-hmm. other people to do it if they even remotely think they have issues like that. So like two different sides of the coin here, and WWE is not on the right side of it in that situation. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because this really comes off like I gotta say, this might be bold, but like they, it's coming off. You know, I don't care much for the Saudi Arabia shows, but and I clearly didn't watch this one live because it was on at like 11 a.m. over here. But I did eventually watch it, and I gotta say, it was probably the best Saudi Arabia show they've had because you didn't have guys past their prime. You had Goldberg, but he was facing Bobby Lashley, not for the title, right? Isn't that what we've been saying? I don't mind seeing yeah. Goldberg just not for the title. And him and Lashley had a typical, pretty decent two big dudes match. And that was cool. We got King Xavier Woods finally, which I was super pumped about because he's talked for years about, you know, that's the only, like he even said in an interview, it's the only single accolade he's ever cared about. So like, you know, he never wanted to be WWE champion. He just wanted to be King of the ring. And like, I almost feel like they brought this whole thing back for him. And I'm totally fine with that because of this end result. And I, you know, in the Lesnar uh, Roman match was everything we were expecting it to be. Cool ending and everything. I'm like, wow, they're coming off of like a decent little, you know, they might have actually going to Saudi Arabia might have helped them for a change. Like they, they, they basically had like a mini WrestleMania in, you know, the middle of November, which is kind of what these are supposed to be. And yep. they have a li- the second they get a little bit of momentum here, this happens. Yeah. And it kind of just kills the whole thing. Oh yeah. Speaking of the Saudi Arabia show, like the only the only thing I really cared about was that finals of the King of the Ring. Yeah, one hundred percent. I wanted to see Xavier Woods uh, win win that thing. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was at work and I was watching it. I I literally yelled, "Yeah!" <laughs> and I'm in a cubicle. I'm in an office, and people are just like, "Are things okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm things are great." Things are yeah. great. Actually. That's what you. T- <laughs> I was yeah, I was, yeah, I was refreshing. Happy. Once I knew that match was on, I was refreshing Twitter like a madman. I'm like, all right, come on, who's who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? And they were showing like <laughs> clips of it or whatever. And I'm like, you know, waiting for that. But yeah, like the other matches were good. I didn't really care about the result, but they they had good matches. This was the only match that I cared about the result. I felt uh, in that whole show. But you know, they have this momentum, and then this happens. And really, it was this momentum at the expense of. Survivor Series, which believe it or not, is only like two weeks away. Yeah. And they're just kind of, they are going with the brand, you know, supremacy gimmick version of it again. They're, it's Raw versus SmackDown, which wouldn't be a problem because that's, you know, what we've come to expend for SmackDown, except they just had a, a draft, which yeah. is the last time we spoke, we were talking about the draft. And I'm pretty sure, like, you know, Team Raw is Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, <laughs> Kevin Owens, Rey Mysterio, and Bobby Lashley with MVP. Take Bobby Lashley out of that equation. What do those other four guys have in common? They were on SmackDown two weeks ago. Down, two weeks ago, yep. I, you know, you know what's funny? I said the same thing. And yep. then and 
before this past Monday, when they put Bobby Lashley in the match, it was Dominic Mysterio. And yeah. I was like, this, this is basically SmackDown versus SmackDown. Yeah. And, and then it was like, you, you know what? They you decided to throw SmackDown, Bobby. And you got Drew and Jeff Hardy. So half of it, you know, because Corbin and, 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 has been and, there, Sammy's been there, and Xavier Woods uh, has been there as well. Wrong. He was on wrong. Okay, so so – Again, four or five guys over here, or uh, I guess it's three or five in this case. But yeah, it's they had to have, they had to have known that. Like, and and there was no build for this. It was literally there started being rumbles of like, is Survivor Series really two weeks away? And then on Twitter, they just like put out the matches of like, hey, this is what's happening. And I get that with this new setup, you don't have to build it too much because it's just your champions against each other. Like, you know, we're getting Big E versus Roman. That should be pretty cool. We're getting Becky versus Charlotte. We've gotten that plenty, but we'll get it again. And, you know, they did just have some sort of, you know, they had to do the belt swap, which was objectively dumb. It was kind of cool when they did it the first time with the tag teams, but you don't want to get in this habit of doing this. Um, So, you know, they've they've at least been in each other's face recently. And that's that's the four matches they have there. I assume they'll do the mid-card champion yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Damien versus uh, Shinsuke, which can, I think that's going to be a big Yeah, but it's, so know. that's not listed on Wikipedia yet, but I would imagine that'd be the case. I don't yeah. see why it wouldn't be. And, and then, then that, the the tag teams, I believe, is going to happen too. Yeah, so it's a really easy show to book now. They've kind of they've done that for themselves, which is which is good. Um, but the fact that nobody really you almost need to not call it Raw versus SmackDown. Like, like do those champion things, you know, this, the Raw champions are, but for those team battles, you can't call them team Raw and SmackDown at this point because they're just, they were just on the other show like a minute ago. Yeah. It's like, you know, when, when a guy in the NFL gets traded and has to like play his former team, like that's cool, but this is not the same effect, which I, in their mind, I think that might be what they're, what they're going for. But everybody on both these teams has been on Raw and SmackDown multiple times. So yep. I don't know what the brand loyalty could matter these days. You, you know, I would one thing I would change about this whole uh, Survivor Series and the draft thing, I will push back the draft after the Survivor Series. I would push it back to right after WrestleMania. Oh yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. Or oh yeah, or do that. Yeah, that would that would make even make even more sense because before, if you remember, they used they that's what they used to do. Yeah, that's a, that's what they used to do, and then all of a sudden they decided to do it in October, which was don't if you ask me i would make one more huge change for the draft one i'd make it an actual draft in the sense of make raw and smackdown since nxt is now fully developmental make raw and smackdown draft from nxt like your true like college guys getting drafted to the pros and if you want to make trades with established stars to get more picks like yeah i'm gonna move drew mcintyre over here so i can get two more picks because i want to get LA Knight and, you know, Harland or something. You know what I mean? Like that would make sense. Cause then it's a true draft. It's not, you know, if you wanted to go back to calling it the superstar shakeup, I'd be in favor of that. Cause that's truly what you were doing at the point. But if you want to make it a draft draft only from NXT, and if you want to trade guys during that time, that is your, you know, you're from SmackDown to raw that five day period. That's like a trading period. You can mm-hmm. make it too. And I think that's that'd be a good way to do it. So we just fixed the draft. Good for us. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So um, I haven't watched a lot of Raw or SmackDown in the meantime of all this because, you know, it's maybe I'll try and pick it up. I'll probably try to watch Survivor Series because, again, like it's a cool show to watch because of the champions versus champions and everything. But and it's easy to book. So I don't know why they couldn't just like, here you go. Like that's it was pretty anticlimactic, I thought. But you got any other thoughts on oh one more thing about the draft because we last episode we did we we assumed the draft was pretty much wrapped up and then there was like two or three picks left to make when we were done recording and the last one for raw was uh that stevenson guy the olympic the game, wrestler yeah, gabe, yeah. gabe stevenson and we didn't really give our thoughts on that and i just want to say i thought that was a huge waste because you know he's gonna have to be in nxt for at least a little bit i think they should have made that exact thing a year like the next draft like a whole year after he's in the system yeah because now he's i guess he'll just randomly attack somebody or like get introduced in like eight months on raw or something but like he should have been the you know put him on nxt starting in like january let's just say january one boom here's gabe stevenson and make him like the the commodity make him like the andrew luck of the next draft where like teams are like 
they do a battle royal, they do a Survivor Series. The like whoever wins the most matches at Survivor Series gets the number one pick, which which I guess goes back to what you were saying. If you do it after Survivor Series and like make like both, you know, a, uh, Adam Pearce and I forget who runs, you know, SmackDown. They both they both, they both run both Raw and SmackDown. Sonya Deville and um and Adam Pearce. Yeah. So they might have to split up. We'll make them like want to fight over who's the number one pick and make it obviously. You know, it's like when Shaq got drafted. Like no matter who gets the number one pick, it's gonna be this guy. Instead, yeah. he's already technically been drafted. We're not going to see him for – it's more like a baseball draft where this guy's going to be in the minors for two years and we're, it'll be a while till we see him again, and it's going to ruin all the buzz, I thought. That, that was my opinion. Like, I understood the pop moment of it, but, like, it, they kind of ruined this guy's first – the first time seeing his face on TV, uh, you know, could have been a much better, bigger moment. Oh, yeah. Um, but supposedly, they're, like, since they, since they dra- uh, signed him, since mm-hmm. WWE signed him, they actually, uh, I guess, he's gonna be still in school in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. So he's they they built they gave him a ring, and I guess he'll have like a training like an annex a mini annex T mm-hmm. at, at um, in Minnesota <clears throat> for him. So they're gonna I guess they're gonna fly people out there and stuff. He still got like his senior year to compete, yeah. I believe. So I wonder yeah, if they're yeah. gonna like when he wins a big when he wins like the Big Ten or something if they're gonna like oh, yeah. show that on raw and so i guess that's one way to build them up but like raw superstar uh, gable stevenson has done this yeah, yeah. bro I, you know i'm waiting to see though i'm waiting to see him versus chad gable bro yes me too that needs to that needs to happen 100 percent. or chad, chad, gable chad gable could be because like this dude obviously it has the it factor physically i'd love for like chad gable to be like his mouthpiece yeah, like when he I comes wouldn't mind in. that either. Yeah, he, he'd be a part of Afro Academy with uh, 100%. with, with uh, Otis and Otis. Yeah, Otis. Yeah, I'm cool with that too. Yeah, so that 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 could be something we see down the line. But it just seemed I feel like they could have waited a lot longer to put his face on a brand. And of course, it was going to be Raw because Raw is the one that struggles really. SmackDown, yeah. true. I mean, if people think it, I'll just say it. SmackDown is the leading brand now. You know, things yes. have changed. SmackDown is the A show. One hundred percent. Uh, so that's that's a lot of WWE stuff. We were, you know, really thrown off last week from the post and the announcement that Ring of Honor made that at the end of the year, they're going to take the first quarter of 2022 off, releasing everybody from their contract and re-envision uh, their company going forward, which is like, there are people that are fully like comfortable knowing that, oh yeah, they'll be, I'm excited. Some people are excited. Like, oh, I can't wait to see what Ring of Honor does moving forward. And other people are not as confident that ring of honor will actually be back. And I don't know which company that I sit in necessarily, but like it should not be lost on how big of an influence. I know ring of honor isn't like a W right now, or like the way impact was at its peak, but ring of honor is probably more important than impact was, even though impact had more overall success. Cause you look at all the guys that came through ring of honor and I don't know where the wrestling world would be if ring of honor never existed. And it would be a huge blow if it is, you know, eventually gone forever, if this is like the first nail in that coffin. Definitely. You know, I had a, a thought that I think that it will probably help out, benefit fucking um, uh, Ring of Honor. I think AEW should buy Ring of Honor and use it like, like use them like an NXT type of whole ordeal. You could get all these guys in mm-hmm. and get these guys on, get these guys trained trained the right way all the green people they'll be over just just they'll just be over there working out um but i'm also happy because then you also could get some some great matchups coming up you could get yeah. um the, the the um who knows where the briscoe's gonna end up going yeah um like like i'm excited to see what's gonna happen um with with a lot of those guys that was there like uh uh was it grisham yeah jonathan grisham I, I, yeah, yeah, I want I want to see what's gonna what's gonna happen with all these guys. Bandito too, the champion. You know, he's he's something yeah. else. Um, so you mentioned buying the company. Apparently, and this is what really concerns me about their future, uh, about ever coming back. Their video library is maybe for sale. Is something that's come out, and that yeah. is something that Tony Khan needs to needs to buy. Really, and Vince should be just as interested in it because you get the Kevin Owens stuff. And you get the Seth Rollins stuff and you get, you know, the, the CM Punk stuff against Samoa Joe and all that. Uh, so that might be a bidding war that I think Tony will stop it. No, he will write a blank check to get that library, but yeah, he will see. You know what I thought about too? Because the first all up, all out. All is a Ring of Honor production. Is a Ring of Honor production, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Can you imagine if WWE has the library of that show? Yeah. Can you, I mean, can you imagine you watch it on Peacock right now? Yeah. Which <laughs> that's that's a saucy thing to think, and I totally get it. But like, if there's any sort of bidding war for this, it used to be like if WWE wants something, they'll get it, right? Yeah. But now if they're making budget cuts, even though they're making 200 mil a year, they're not going to get in a bidding war over this. Whereas Tony Khan, like I said, I think he'd write the blank check to just to, I mean, this, this guy got into wrestling being a tape trader. He would now own one of the most extensive. And he's mentioned that he wants to eventually have some sort of streaming platform for AEW. Once they got four or five years of shows to put on there, you'll have AEW dark and elevation. And then you throw the whole, 15 year ring or 25 year ring of honor library it'll be at that point uh you know that, that would definitely be worth it but if ring of honor does in fact come back and that is what i'm hoping for like vw buys it cool but i would much rather them just continue yeah um and i think what they what they would need to do the, the one thing the way impact and tna used to separate themselves with the x division the ring of honor is on to something with their pure division that you know mid card title that they've brought back recently there's certain rules like you can only get three rope breaks in a match and they really bring it. It's the closest thing to collegiate wrestling that pro wrestling has. And I think when they come back, they need to make that their front and center thing. And that needs to be like their brand of wrestling. And I think if they do that, they will actually stand apart because otherwise nothing truly separates them from impact, right? Nothing truly separates them from MLW. They're just another company from another region of the country that has a different set of wrestlers that's the like gcw is the hardcore wrestling that we have in 2021 something yeah. separates them from everybody else yeah. i think if they are known as you know the pure if you've never watched ring of honor and you have to explain to someone that their style is different it'll set them apart and i think if they're gonna make waves when they do come back hopefully and uh was it march or april of 22 i think the pure division is going to be the key to, to to that revival yeah, um, I, I I hope they can bounce back from it. I hope they could, because I mean, because um, like like everyone says, it's always nice to have more competition out there and mm-hmm. more places for people like these wrestlers that just got released in, the um to be able to go to ROH, um instead of having everyone go straight to AEW or Impact, you yeah. know, uh, it's, it's always nice to see other people go to other places. Yeah, it is. And and the interesting thing about it, too, is like they still have shows to run. They have one more set of tapings yeah. that are going to air and they have a pay-per-view that airs towards the end of the year. And then mm-hmm. they'll take like that three months off. So like there's still some Ring of Honor to be watched this year. And like I'll probably check it out to see where they leave things, you know, and then yeah. when they come when they come back, are all their champions going to be like vacant? Or are they going to at least going to like when they release these guys like, hey, we're going to pick you back up for at least a a string of taping so you can drop the belt or whatever. Like, I don't know how that, like it's very similar to the way NWA like theirs was due to the pandemic, obviously, but mm-hmm. they just kind of paused everything. They had some matches at random indie events to move their belts around. But like, I think it'll be very similar to that if they do come back. Um, yeah. But yeah, it'll be a very interesting and, you know, keep your, keep your eyes peeled to, to any moves they do make in that three months. I'm very curious what that's going to be. Oh yeah, for sure, man. And the, the main event of today's show and also this weekend is AW Full Gear from Minnesota, which to me is just such an odd place to run like a big, like a big pay-per-view. Granted, every pay-per-view AW has is big because there's only four of them. And before we get into this, one thing I wanted to mention about WWE earlier, they released their pay-per-view schedule for 2022 and there's only 10 on there. So they have even gotten the hint that less is more. I yeah. think when they had the brand split, they they did upwards of like, I think they did 14 in a year one time, which is the most I've ever done. And for them to cut back to 10, I think is like a great move on their part. I was happy to see that. I forgot what actually got cut, um, but I'm still, I was still happy to see that, that they're agreeing that less is more for that. Did you know that some, um, Survivor Series the last, is the last people view of the year? Yeah, they're not doing anything in December now. Um, January January first, yeah, January first. They're doing something called Day One, I think, or something like that. Yeah, it's January first. January first, right? New Year's Day, yeah. Yeah, so so that'll be the first one. So that yeah, normally we'd have what New Year's resolution or back in the day it was Armageddon. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but uh, and and you know what? That's fine. I think Survivor Series is a cool way to 
end of year, even if you bump it to like the last Sunday of November, if you wanted to, because it always goes hand in hand with Thanksgiving. But um, no, it should be. It should be the last thing. And then the the next thing, I guess they're going to do this day one deal. And then there might be, then it should be the Royal Rumble. It's the Royal Rumble, yeah. Right into that. So that I'm excited to see that. Less is more with them, with these pay-per-views for sure. And some of that might be, we're not factoring in the Saudi Arabia shows with this. So they might be right around 12 anyway, but at least it won't be your traditional, you know, 14 like they've had. Yeah. So let's jump into full gear. We're just going to quickly run down these matches. We're going to be watching the show on Saturday, and then we're going to, might not be out at the same day, but we'll we'll review that show uh, after it happens. But we're going to run through these matches here. We're going to start this order. I don't know if this is going to be the order, but this is how Wikipedia has it. But a match that was just made on Dynamite, Pac and Cody Rhodes against Malachi Black and Andre Andrade, excuse me. Um, it was funny. Right before this whole thing happened, I was like, wow, Cody's not going to be on this show. That's kind of surprising. And then this whole thing took place right before this. Interesting match. Um you know, Malachi and, and Andrade as a team is this, this is two oddball teams, but they both have, you know, the enemy of the enemy is my friend, basically, is how the storyline is going. Um, I would be surprised if Cody and Pac doesn't don't win this. Um, but if they don't, I, I'm 100 percent certain that it's Cody that gets pinned. But I am going to go with with uh, the babyface team on this one. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm actually going to go the other route. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, Malachi and Andrade. Uh, I just think I think that that loss that on uh, that um that uh damn that Malachi had against against Cody was mm-hmm. was a fluke and that won't happen again. Right. And I think this is also gonna bring because those rumors around that that Malachi Black is gonna have a black house supposedly like yeah House actually. of Black yeah mm-hmm. House of Black yeah. Mm-hmm. Have black house. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if something like that happens, and you know, there's rumors that like Ray Wyatt is going to be in that, and then you mentioned Ring of Honor guys, Brody King is a guy that's been mentioned to be the House of Black. Those three guys. So if one of them shows up, I could for sure see it. The reason I'm picking the baby faces here is actually has to do with the next match: um, Christian Cage and Jurassic Express against the Super Click, Adam Cole and the Young Bucks. And in this case, I definitely think the heels win this. False count anywhere match that they're having. So you have the baby face in one match, and then you have the the heel super click win the next it, one. That's kind of my thought there. It's false count, false count anywhere. That's what it says. You can't can't make stuff up on Wikipedia, so it's gotta be true. <laughs> I, I I did not know that part. Yeah. I just thought it was gonna be a regular standard match, which right. uh, I mean the false count the false count um, stipulation makes it more interesting to watch. Because mm-hmm. to be honest with you, man, I'm tired of watching. Uh, 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 the Super Elite versus Jungle Express and Christian. Yeah, they definitely had. This, this should be the end of it. One, it's pay per view. Two, it's a false count anywhere now. Uh, this should be the end of you know. And I think you know the, the Super Click win win this battle. I would imagine. Yeah, I believe so too. Especially with now Bobby Fish lurking around there. Yeah, that was a really cool way they set all that up. He's like, you know, they're not going to ignore the fact that they were teammates for for so long. And even when Adam Cole had the issue with O'Reilly, Fish was kind of just like caught in the middle. They never really. They're not making you try to pretend that they had issues because they never had issues. He just kind of yeah. got stuck in the in the crosshairs. Um, and I love the, you know, I forget the wording, but they were like, there's no dispute that this is the era of all elite or whatever, you know, words they use. I, that, that was that was funny for sure. Uh, <laughs> next match has only had like two weeks of, of build, but it's probably, you know, people are most excited for this. CM Punk and Eddie Kingston. Uh, this is is going to be incredible. And I think we're finally we've taken one step in the direction of a heel punk because, mm-hmm. you know, I, th- this is this is kind of tweener versus tweener at this point. But like, I'm pretty certain punk's going to win. But how cool would it be if Eddie Kingston actually won this? Like, yeah, it, it would be cool. I, I wouldn't be mad about that. Yeah, that's that's the that's the good thing about this match is like either or I'm yeah. going to be happy with whoever wins. But if uh, my thing is if Eddie wins and Punk gets pissed that maybe it's, he catches him with a quick one, you know, something. Like, and you can tell the story, like, listen, Punk was away for seven years. Eddie Kingston, you know, like, at this point, he's wrestled more than Punk. He's almost the veteran and almost the veteran in this. And if he, you know, it's one of those, like, you know, like when you're a kid and you, you play, like, video games with your friend and you're beating him and then he, like, kicks the PlayStation so it restarts or whatever. It'd be one of those things, like, you know, Punk was having a great time when he was winning. But you know he's not as happy now that he's not getting his hand raised, and that could start yeah. uh, heel punk. So I could I could really see 
Uh, it, I'm not going to bet against Punk, but like, I think it would be a lot more fascinating if Eddie Kingston actually won this. And, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, some people are saying, oh, the Punk's lore of being there is already gone. No, it's not. We're just ready to see him get in meteor storylines. Like, we were, we, you know, the, the lore of him just like, oh my God, he's here may have faded a little yeah. bit, but we still want to see, you know, P- Punk is a lot like, you know, Cody Rhodes with a lot of his matches. You, he's great in the ring, but like the story is what makes you want to see him. And like, mm-hmm. other than the Darby Allen one and a quick little thing with Team Taz, his matches have just been look. It's CM Punk in the ring. Isn't that great to see him back? Like that's been his whole story. So I think I think we're in agreement that we're gonna go with Punk, but like secretly, not so secretly, hoping that Eddie Kingston wins. Yeah, yeah. This next one is a little harder to predict for me. I might even let you go first if you know. But Darby Allen and MJF. Um, MJF's really only lost a good time or two. Um, my only thought on this is maybe Wardlow costs him this match, and that's why I'd go with Darby Allen. But otherwise, I would think MJF. You know, I'm trying to be not as indecisive as I am, but like, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go ahead and go with that. I'll say Darby Allen wins because of a Wardlow like miscue. That's that'll be my my prediction. Yeah, I guess I could definitely see that. I could see them. I could see uh, them having Darby winning just because MJ uh, Wardlow costs him the loss and then um have him and Wardlow go against each other uh go against each other later on down the line mm-hmm. um and this this turns Wardlow baby face as well because there's been a lot of tension between them two and I got a question sure what happened to the pinnacle they're, so they're around a little so like you know how like FTR has kind of been loaned out to Andrade through yeah. MJF I I feel like they're just take it like the inner circle they've kind of like dispersed and then come back like you know sammy went won the tnt title and then now they're they're doing their own thing so like i think it's just like a it's an alliance it's not like every match we have has to be together kind of thing you know that that's my my answer i guess okay Uh, but yeah i I, I as well think dariel is going as well mm -hmm. my only other thought is maybe mjf wins this one which leads to darby allen and sting versus mjf and wardlow and that's when the dissension happens and costs it you know i i could like i'm thinking maybe one match ahead if they if this is where it really where it breaks down but i could see them stretching it just that one more extra match because you, you know where wardlow tries to hand him the ring or whatever and he and he messes up but mjf maybe like kicks him in the dick and rolls him up and still wins even though like he messed up but it didn't cost him and then the next time he messes up, it does cost him. You kind of build yeah. up to that or something like that. Uh, speaking of the diamond ring, w- we've got to be due for another one of those battle royals by now, right? Like, yeah. is MJF going to be win it three years in a row, like, eventually? <laughs> like, uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see the next time they do one of those. Uh, AW World Tag Team Titles. I thought this was going to be, like, a winner-take-all thing. It does not appear to be so. But the Lucha Brothers against FTR. Um, I know the Lucha Brothers just won – the titles at the last show but they do yeah yeah. yeah, the last pay-per-view but they they do strike me as a team that like them winning it is a story they don't need to hold it forever for it to like last so i might i'm gonna step out on a limb here a little bit but i might go ftr because them holding beating ft uh, beating lucha brothers for both sets of titles because they're the triple h champions i love that whole storyline by the way where they came out as fake luchadors and and everything that was hilarious. So I will go on out a limb a little bit here and go FTR. Yeah, I'm going FTR as well. Um, I I can honestly see some shenanigans happening during this match mm-hmm. uh, with Telly and uh, Alex. Yeah, for sure. They're they're gonna get involved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next, this this is either gonna be really fun. This is not. This won't be Flair Steamboat, obviously. But this is either gonna be really fun or really, really stupid. And I really hope it's just fun, stupid, not stupid, stupid. But the inner circle against American top team with, you know, Jose Altador, uh, I'm sorry, Junior Dos Santos and Andre Olaski. I don't know where I got Jose Altador from. Um, against the inner circle with, you know, Ethan Pay and Dan Lambert is actually in the match. Um, which, so to me, either he's going to get the pin on Jericho. They're going to like get the, you know, knock him out, whatever they're going to do, and just throw Dan on top of it so he'll have that bragging right forever, or we're going to see him tapping out to the walls of Jericho. I think those are the two endings we're going to get. And the only reason I'm going with the inner circle is because 
the top America's top team have had the, the their number the whole rest of the way. So it, it would make sense if the inner circle doesn't win anything here, then they'll have just completely, uh, you know, been goose egged in this whole thing. And this is a street fight too, for what that's worth. Yeah. Um, I don't care for this match. No, I'm, I'm not a big fan of what they've been doing with, with both, with both, uh, with the inner circle and the man of the year. Cause I, I'm a big fan of Scorpio sky. Same. And I don't like the fact that they're just like, Using him, using using him and Ethan Page, just just to just to lose against the inner circle for the inner circle to get a, to, to you know to get a win. If you remember uh, a while back, uh, double or nothing, I guess it was when Scorpio won the ladder match and he yeah. didn't win the title. I was, if you remember, I was very in my feelings about that. I thought it was the perfect time to give it Scorpio Sky. Um, so oh, yeah. I'm with you 100. Um, percent When they did the last match with these guys and the American Top Team won. If that was the end of it, I'd be like, okay, cool. Like, that was interesting yeah, cool. to see, That's like, good. UFC yeah. Hall of Famers in the ring. So, uh, this should be the end of it, though, I'd imagine. Maybe the inner circle wins. I, like, yeah, quick answer. I don't really care who wins because <laughs> right, we're going to see an interesting thing here or there. But, like, the win, there's no stakes to win this thing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah because they're making it like the the, um, the Minneapolis ball. Street ball fight. Yeah. Yeah. Street it's, fight. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Minneapolis uh, Street Fight is what it says here. And also, I got another thing. Why? Why is it always in a circle in like these stampede type things, bro? So, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> Jericho's getting older, and he can't really do these barn burners that he used to. <laughs> so it's much easier for him to be involved in something like this, and it's also the same reason, like. Dos Santos can swing a chair. A loss, he can throw a dude through a table. It won't take as much training to get them prepared to do something like that than you just put them in the ring and have them, like, work. You know, yeah. so I, I think it's a combination of those two things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, this is another one where, like, there's no loser for the fans, but the Eliminator Tournament Final between Brian Danielson and Miro um, – if, if I'm just going with who I want to win, which is kind of how I make my picks anyway, unless there's like an obvious, like, I want this guy, but it'll be this guy. Mm-hmm. I both think and want Miro to win this. Because if Brian Danielson doesn't lose to someone like Miro, I don't know who, who he'll ever lose to. And that's a similar thing to Punk. Like, eventually, there has to be that. And what if, you know, you bring both these guys in and there's always talk about, like, oh, they're just relying on the past. What if on the same pay-per-view, Danielson and Punk both lose? How crazy would that be? Yeah, that would be crazy as hell. Yeah, and and if, you know, in the future, regardless of who wins the main event, we'll get to that, but Miro versus Omega or Miro versus Adam Page on, on the in a couple weeks or the next pay-per-view, I'm good with either of those. And I mean, yeah. same with Danielson. There's not, a, there's not a bad answer here, yeah. but I think it would be even more surprising if Miro wins. That's just my opinion. Yeah, this, the, my heart wants to say Miro, but then my head is going to say, my brain's going to say uh, Brian Danielson just because uh, they're going to have him run it back, basically. I have a feeling that they're going to try to run it back, but then also I won't be surprised when we get to when we get there that mm-hmm. Hangman wins. Um, I, I would love to see Hangman versus versus uh, Brian. I would love to see Hangman versus uh, Miro. Hell, I would love to see Miro versus Omega. Yeah, but I just think they're gonna. Um, there's no uh, bad combination of those. Yeah, four. there's there's definitely there's not. It, um, hell, give me a freaking triple. Give me all uh, a fatal four way. Yeah, all four against each other. I'm down. Yeah, I just have my heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, this but is, yeah, I, I can see I can see Brian Danielson winning though. Uh, this is probably the easiest match on here. Not not that I got anything bad uh, against Ty Conti, but Britt Baker is probably gonna um, retain the title. This is such every time I see Ty Conti, who I think has gotten way better in the ring. She used to just yeah. be like nice to look at, and now she's gotten like really good. But yeah. and this is such a deep dive, so like I might go over some people's heads. You've seen the movie The Replacements with like Keanu Reeves, the football movie. Yeah. The the cheer the head cheerleader, not not the one, not like the love interest, but like the first one she recruits, the blonde <laughs> one, looks mm-hmm. just like Ty Conti. And if you like go back and see that movie, <laughs> like you'll never look at it differently. But every time I see Ty Conti, I think of the head cheerleader in the replacements. But that's just me. But yeah, Britt Baker, this should be fun. This should be a good match. 
Um, but Britt Baker should win this. This might be the shortest match on the show because like she should beat her fairly handily. Like she'll give her give her a little bit of pushback and then she just like dominates. Yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Uh, 100%. Uh, last match Kenny Omega versus Adam Page for the AW world title. Damn near three years in the making. Uh, this is this is storyline at its best. I'm gonna just I'll jump right to it. Adam Page needs to win here. I understand that some people think like, all right, Mega can we get we've stretched this three years, we can stretch it to the next favor. You could, you could do that, but something that needs to get done eventually should get done immediately. Like this mm-hmm. is at the point where this needs to happen. And to go back to our conversation about the tournament final, there's no bad combination of those four guys, but the best combination, in my opinion. You get Page versus Miro at the next pay per view or in a, the first big dynamite of the year, something like that. And then you give me Omega Danielson two with no belt. So it's literally just to prove who's better. And you don't yeah. have to worry about the title part of it. And they can truly just do it to wrestle. And like so we just talked about all the other combinations of this, and they would, they would be great. And I'd have no issue if both of these are the answers I didn't give. But to me, that's the best combination of this. Yeah. Um, I th- I'm right there with you. I believe that uh, that that Adam Page, um, Hangman, has Hangman to win. Page, yeah. <laughs> yeah. has to win as well. Um, if and if he doesn't win, then like at, uh, at that point, like who does win? Because everyone like, from the summer was like, "Hey, Hangman's going to win. Is going to beat um, King Omega," and I'll be definitely shocked if Hangman loses. Just because the, all the rumors and everyone's like, hey, I, I, we believe that Hangman is going to win. And um, I, it, it's going to be, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat when I'm at your house watching this. Yeah. Watching this match specifically, just because I want to see what's going to happen. I think they're going to, they could do some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think there's going to be shenanigans? There's got to be some. I mean, Don Callis is going to be there. That was really cool what they did with the contract signing, I thought, where he was. Because I don't know about you, because we're, we're both cameramen. I don't know if you noticed, like, like that's like the third time this camera guy's gotten in the shot. Like, he's got to be getting reamed in his ear, you know? <laughs> um, and two things I want to mention that I thought was funny. But the other part that I laughed about is once Callis hit him with the camera, he was wearing a mask. And he took the mask off and he had a fake mustache on. <laughs> I just want that. I don't want that to go unnoticed that he like put a costume on a costume. I just thought that I thought that was funny. Um, I don't know that we ever brought this up before. I think I've mentioned this. This this is probably one of the better contract signings we've had in a while, right? Nobody went through the table. It was a little bit different. Are we supposed to like in kayfabe in the world of kayfabe? Does every match require a contract signing that they no. just like have real quick in the back? Is it all pay-per-view matches? Like, why do they randomly get to decide what, like, the way I look at it, right? Like, uh, a weigh-in for a UFC fight. Every fight gets that. It's just, yeah. you know, some of them are really quick. Like, oh, 198, oh, 202, okay, get out of here. And then, like, the main eventers come. Yeah. But am, am I led to believe that every match has some sort of a, a signing? Like, in kayfabe world? Yeah, I believe so. Like, like behind closed doors, I believe that everyone, is, 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 uh, there's a, uh, sign a contract. They got to sign a contract. If I could everything. ask like Jim Cornette or like Billy Corgan or Tony Khan or like Bruce Pritchard, even like any promote, I think that'd be the number one question that I would ask. Like in kayfabe, in my head, am I supposed to, or is it just like that's like the way in for Cody and um, the boxer guy? What was his name? Go go. Like Ooh. that was stupid, but like it made sense because he was a boxer and they were literally doing it just to hype up the fight. And I was okay mm-hmm. with that. But the fact that, you know, like, you, you don't have a way in for every match. So, like, but we knew that going in. But just something I've been wanting to get on. Every time there's a contract signing that always pops in my head, I'm like, might I believe this happens every time or just when it's important or when it's convenient? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, no, this is going to be a great show. So, we're going to have a good time. I think me, you, and Jake, and potentially Billy are going to be hanging out watching it. Uh, the main event, like you said, is going to be great. Punk and Kingston, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Darby Allen and MJF don't really care who wins, but I'm interested what story they tell there. Um, and, you know, just, even the matches like the the Christian K, the street fight, or I'm sorry, the false count anywhere. Um, it's going to be good regardless of who wins. Um, the street fight's probably going to be funny with um, with uh, the top team. FTR and Lucha Brothers, you can't miss. Uh, there's just, there's no, there's no miss on this show. It's, I think it's going to be awesome. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. 
there's a lot of matches, and I think he saw my freaking my um my my tweet uh, yesterday. I was, it was going down through the card, and I'm just like, yo, we're gonna have another twelve uh, another twelve o'clock. Ending. Probably. And the reason I don't mind it for them, though, and as we just mentioned, WWE has so many favorites. If you're only going to do it four times a year, you know what to expect. Like, if you yeah. expect someone to stay up till midnight once a month to watch your product instead of quarterly, like, you know, to me, that's a little different. I agree. This is going to be kind of long, but we'll be fine. We'll have enough beer. It'll be good. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, to me, that's the difference. If you had one every month and you, and you, whatever, WWE's even gotten better about that. Every time they have one of those shows that end at like 10 45, I always go on Twitter and praise them for it. Cause if you're going to have this every month, make it worth watching. It doesn't have to be three hours. Just cause a two hour yeah. pay-per-view is fine. Cause they're not pay-per-views anymore. It's in my nine ninety nine. It's in Donovan's nine ninety nine uh, <laughs> Peacock subscription that he so graciously lets me use sometimes. But you know, it's not it's not the true pay per view anymore. So you don't have to make it three hours. You can two hour two hour pay per view when it's a good theme or just four or five good matches on it. I think is much better. But if you're only gonna do it four times a year like AEW does, lay it on me. Give me the what are we at? I think total counting the pre show, there's ten matches. So the pay per view itself has nine. And, you know, some of these matches might be fairly quick. Like, I, I would imagine the, the women's title match will be. Um, that's really it. Maybe the false count anywhere is just, like, 10 minutes, and it's fun, and it's fast, and you're done. And I can't imagine the um, America Top Team guys are going to are gonna last super long out there. They're going to get blown up pretty quick. Because I know they're world-class fighters, but, like, this is a different type of endurance. So, can't imagine. Those three, I'd look for to, like, cut time and stuff, I would think. True. Any uh, any last words before we get up out of here? No, I got nothing, man. All good. Uh, All right, guys. Yeah, well, I'm excited for full gear. For sure, man. We will be there, and we plan to, if it's not super late, that same night we're going to record our review of it and then put it out probably the next day or something. And if not, we'll hop on Zoom like we are now and do it on, like, Monday or Tuesday. That's That'll be the plan. So enjoy full gear, guys, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.